Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are meeting after a gap of uh, around 10 to 12 days. So this is a video on uh, deduction from the gross total income part two. In this video, uh, the deduction of the second type that is uh, based on the personal expenditure made by the SSE are discussed under uh, this video. Kindly watch the video till the end. Like, share and subscribe the channel. If you have any comments about the video, please put your comments in the comment box. Now, let's move to the presentation. Section 80D can be claimed by an individual and HVF here. This deduction can be claimed for the payment made in the form of a MediClaim insurance premium or any sum deposited by the SSC in the central government health scheme or the expenditure incurred for preventive health checkup up to rupees 5000. So this is a deduction which is specifically based on the health policy only. Even it, uh, to a certain extent it covers the term insurance also. The policy may be taken on the health of the SSC himself or on the life of the spouse or on the parents or dependent children and in case of Hindu and family it can be taken on the health of any member of the family here. The one condition relating to this section ADD is that the premium should be paid by any mode other than the cash. In other words, to say, if the SSE has paid the premium by cash for the medical claim or the medical uh, health insurance, in such case, he is not eligible to claim reduction under Section 80D. So the premium should be paid either by check or either by UPI payments or by direct transfer. In such case, the SSE can claim reduction under Section 80D here. The, uh, if the SSC has spent any expenditure for the purpose of a preventive medical checkup, in such case he can claim to the maximum extent of rupees only 5000. So now let us see what shall be the maximum amount of the deduction under section 80D here. Here the premium, it consists of three things here. It may be like uh, the premium paid on the health insurance or the any sum deposited by the SSC in the scheme of the central government health scheme or the expenditure incurred for a preventive health checkup. So here the maximum amount of deduction under section 80D shall not exceed if it is in case of individual if the policy is taken only on a single life. In such case, the maximum amount shall not exceed Rs. 25,000. If the policy is taken on the parents who are less than 60 years of age, in such case, 25,000 can be claimed. Suppose if the policy is taken, an additional deduction of for medical claim in case the policy is taken in the name of senior citizen, Rs. 25,000 will be allowed. So in totally a 50,000 amount of deduction will be allowed. Suppose if the medical claim policy is taken on the health of the senior citizen only, in such case uh, the maximum amount of deduction shall not exceed rupees 50,000. If in, ca uh, in case of HF, the policy may be taken on the health of any member and the maximum amount shall not exceed rupees uh, 25,000 here. So when it is uh, looked into the table, it can be said that the maximum amount of deduction under section 80D shall not exceed rupees 50,000 in any case here. Now let's move to the section 80DD here. Here this can be claimed by an individual in respect of the maintenance including the medical treatment of a dependent who is a person with a disability. This is quite a different from a section 80U. 
so later on we can make a distinction between section 80 dd and section 80 u right now let's uh, stick up our discussion only to section 80 dd here so this deduction can be claimed by the individual SSC in respect of the maintenance uh, including the medical treatment of a dependent who is suffering from the disability here the question comes here who is a dependent here here the dependent means the spouse children parents brothers and sisters of the individual or any of them here the expenditure must be incurred on the medical treatment including the nursing training and rehabilitation of disabled dependent here the nursing the training means when a victim will be given a training to stand alone on his leg so till then it will be given here so here the amount may be paid or deposited under any scheme framed by the life insurance corporation of india or other insurer or the administrator or specified company and approved by the central board for direct access here so the person must be suffering from the disability here the in order to claim section 80 dd here the assessee has to satisfy certain conditions here the assessee should be resident of india already we know who is a resident of india now so the assessee must satisfy any one of the basic conditions and uh, both the additional conditions in such case he will be called as a uh, ordinary resident or simply resident of India. The dependent has not claimed any deduction under section 80 u So what is this section 80 u That we will discuss in the subsequent uh, videos. The SSE shall have to furnish a copy of the certificate issued by the medical authority along with the return of income. So in order, uh, he has to prove his disability and that disability should be certified by the medical authorities like a district uh, health officer so who show, who shall provide a certificate certifying that the dependent is suffering from the disability and such copy of the certificate must be enclosed with the return of income in such cases the SSC is eligible to claim deduction under section ATDD here sometimes the disability may be for a certain particular time Beyond that, if it is not come cured, then again she has to furnish a fresh certificate. So, where the condition of the disability requires a reassessment, a fresh certificate from the medical authority shall have to be obtained after the expiry of period mentioned on the original certificate in order to claim the deduction. Suppose, say for example, if it is mentioned as the disability will be for only five years. So the certificate is valid for five years. After the completion of the five years, if the disability is, is over, then there's no problem. In such case, it cannot be claimed. Suppose if the disability is continued here, then the SSC should furnish if a fresh certificate for the same effect. The amount of deduction here. This is a quite surprising here that the actual expenditure incurred by the SSE for the medical treatment of a dependent suffering from the disability is totally ignored. In other words, to just say rupees 75,000 or rupees 125,000 in case of severe disability will be allowed irrespective of the actual expenditure. In other words, to say it is a flat deduction of rupees 75,000 in case of normal disability or rupees 125,000 in case of uh, severe disability here. The SSC need not produce any evidences for the purpose of for the expenditure made by him for such purpose here. So this is a flat deduction which is available to the individual as well as HF SSC. This is one of the lacunas in the Income Tax Act so that it will reduce the total income of the SSC here. Then now let's see section 80 ddb here section 80 ddb deals with the 
medical treatment for specified diseases for the assessee or his dependents. An individual who is a resident is allowed deduction under section 80 DDB for the purpose of medical treatment of the specified diseases or ailment for himself or his dependent. So an individual as well as HF can claim this deduction and remember here this deduction is based on the actual expenditure incurred by the SSC which shall be compared with the maximum limit. Such expenditure should be incurred for the treatment of a specified diseases or the diseases as prescribed by the Central Board of Direct Access. The expenditure incurred for the medical treatment of the SSC himself or his dependents in case of individual and any member in case of the Hindu undivided family here. The specified diseases as notified by the Central Board of Direct Access are neurological diseases, cancer, AIDS, chronic renal failure, hemophilia. Here the dependent means the children, the spouse, parents, brothers and sisters of the SSE or any one of them. The amount of deduction, in other words to say the maximum amount of deduction shall not exceed rupees of 40,000 in case of uh, in case of other citizens and rupees 1 lakh in case of senior citizen as well as a super senior citizen. So this maximum limit shall be compared with the actual expenditure whichever is less is allowed as a deduction under section 80 DDB here. Then comes here deduction under section 80 E here. This is a deduction in respect of the interest on the loan taken for the purpose of a higher education. So only an individual SSE can claim this type of deduction. No other SSE are eligible for a deduction under section 80 here. Nowadays the cost of education is increasing day by day. So the common man cannot afford the cost of such education then in such case he can go for borrowing of the loan and provide education either for himself or to his spouse or to the children of the SSE here. So this deduction is in respect of the payment of interest on the loan for higher education of himself or the spouse or children here. The deduction is allowed up to 8 assessment year when he starts making the payment of the interest or until the interest is repaid in full whichever is earlier. So either the repayment of the loan or the uh, ceiling limit of uh, 8 years whichever comes earlier so until that period he can claim deduction section 80 e here and the here the section 80 e provides the meaning of higher education here it is a full time studies of any graduate or postgraduate in engineering including architecture media management or postgraduate in applied science like biotechnology etc then our bureau of pure science including uh, mathematics and uh, statistics here and remember this must be meant for full time study suppose if the SSC has borrowed a loan for the purpose of providing a part time education in such case the such an SSC cannot claim deduction under section 80 e here and such education must be provided only within India then only eligible Suppose say for example if, if the uh, uh, children of the SSE is doing uh, MS in US and if the loan is borrowed and in such case he can uh, the such an SSE cannot claim the reduction under section 80 here. So the full time higher education must be provided in India. So in such case uh, if the uh, SSE has borrowed a loan for, from any bank or any other financial institutions for providing higher education to uh, either for himself or for his uh, spouse or for his children in such case uh, the interest paid only the interest paid on such loan is eligible for deduction under section 80 e here then comes a section 80 e e here here this is a deduction within uh, in respect of the interest on the loan taken for a residential house property 
any interest payable on the loan taken by an individual for the purpose of acquisition of a residential house property shall be allowed subject to the condition of the amount of the loan does not exceed rupees 35 lakhs the value of the residential property shall not exceed rupees 50 lakhs the associate does not own any other residential house property on the date of sanction of the loan so if the associate fulfills any of these conditions here then in such case the associate is eligible to claim deduction in respect of the interest payable on the loan taken by an individual for the purpose of purchase of the residential house property then the maximum amount of deduction shall not exceed rupees 50,000 here. So in other words to say the actual amount of the interest paid shall be compared with the maximum ceiling limit of rupees 50,000 whichever is lower is allowed as a deduction under section 80 EE here. So all these deductions like section 80D, 80DD, 80DDB, 80E and 80EE are concerned with the expenditure made for personal reasons uh, uh, then only the SSE is eligible to claim deduction section under any of these sections here. Thank you for watching this video.